Hey, thanks. Um, quick hands up, who was in the last session? I think everybody, right? Cool, okay, that really helps. <laughs> because a lot of what I talk about, I'm about to talk about is directly related to what Jamie and Kat were talking about in the last session. So uh, I'm Rob Moffat, I work at Finos. So that Git proxy project is one of our projects that we host in our foundation. I'm the senior, uh, senior technical architect at Finos and um, I work on a project called Open Source Readiness, which is uh, all about those kind of issues that uh, Jamie and Kat were talking about. So. Uh, I'm going to sort of take you through the si how it looks from our side um, today. So um, quickly on my background, so I've worked in various different places in the financial industry in London over the last 20 or so years, not giving away my age too badly. Um, most recently um, at HSBC and Deutsche Bank, I was working with Symphony Bots, and at Deutsche Bank, I uh, built some software to uh, allow people internally to use Symfony, which is a chat platform, and create bots for that chat platform much more easily. And I was lucky at Deutsche Bank to be allowed to open source that software. So we created an open source library called, whoa, that was, oh God, I'm giving it all away here, called Springbot. Um, and we gave this to the Finos Software Foundation. So I, the Kind of the reason I ended up at Finos was because I actually had all these dealings with them through this project. Um, and this is a, 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 an ongoing concern of Finos. It's an open source project. I think if this had stayed as an internal project in Deutsche Bank, it might be still going. It might have some, still some interest. But it definitely has its own life now as a Finos project. Um, and people can just pick it up and use it. We get pull requests and people improving it. And we get other firms interested in using it as well. Um, so there's a nice picture of an iceberg. A lot of Finos projects are like Springbot. We have some, you know, we have interest across the finance industry. So there's projects like Perspective and Legend where we have various companies like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley who are interested in contributing to, the, to those projects and improving them. But those open source projects are the tip of the iceberg. Most developers in finance, they're kind of the iceberg under the sea that we don't really see. There are thousands, I'm going to come back to this point, but there are thousands of people working in finance, like Jamie was talking about, that, that really don't interact with open source. And, and his talk was all about how, how we can fix that problem, and, and this one is as well. So, um, the, I guess the question is, why does that happen? Why, why is finance uniquely bad at getting involved with open source? And one of the reasons is just the rules in finance. Okay, so um, I remember working at one of the banks I've mentioned, and somebody emailed themselves some code so they, t they took code internally and emailed it to their personal email address. And they did not work at the bank after that. That was an instant sackable offense. There is a, a strict rule saying you cannot send code outside the bank. There's also rules around you know, what you can say to people outside the bank. There's reputational concerns. There's risks around that. So <laughs> I think you can imagine how that is going to impact on open source. There, if you're working inside your firewall in a bank, chances are you're not going to be able to access Facebook or Twitter. You're not going to be able to access Google Docs. We have this problem all the time at Finos where we're trying to arrange meetings and people can't get on the Google calendar to see when we're setting the meetings up. Uh, we also have problems with people getting on Zoom and things like this. All of, all of these are because of internal bank rules about data leakage. They're very careful with this. So that's one of the main things that is getting in the way of people getting involved with open source. If a developer wants to get on GitHub and write a pull request, they might not even be allowed to go to github.com. So those kind of data leakage rules, when applied overzealously, actually prevent people from in getting engaged in open source. Second thing is compliance. So, um, <laughs> so y y there's a large part of the people in banks are trying to build things and push things forward and make things happen. And then there's another side of the people in the banks who are stopping them. And <laughs> that's, that's a 
that's a good thing. You need that tension. You need the, the balance of people trying to change things, but also people going, well, steady now. We need to be careful with this. But open source gets caught in the crossfire there. Where, whereas you would like people to talk, like Jamie did, we, we would like people to get involved and submit pull requests and fix issues in open source projects. But then there's this whole other side of the bank which is saying, well, we need to start auditing this stuff. We need to make sure that code leaving the building is carefully controlled. And so that's where tools like Git proxy come in. Uh, here's an example of this. Um, so this was from 2022. Um, the SEC fining firms to the tune of $1.1 billion for using WhatsApp to talk about um, trading, uh, talking about bank business. Um, so you can see some of the, the banks that are involved in this. Now, if you're the compliance arm of a bank and you see this sort of thing happening, your instant reaction is going to be, shut it all down. We don't want another £1.1 billion fine. This is awful. You know, um, the risk to the bank is huge, and the, the benefit might be quite minor by comparison. So um, when, you, when, you, when look like, looked at like that, you have to think, oh, what, what's the best thing for our bank to do? And we're going to try and stop uh, any, any accidents like this happening because of open source. So compliance is a big part of this. Uh, the other thing is culture. Right, so banks have a very... Well, depending on the bank you work at, right? But banks have a very secretive culture. They're in charge of a lot of people's very private information. You know, I don't want my personal bank details getting leaked on the internet. I don't want people to know what I'm spending my hard-earned Finos paycheck on. Um, that's a good thing. We need that culture. But that is counterproductive for open source, which is all about sharing things and giving away secrets and working together. Um, so this is a mountain to climb, right? So it's a lot if we want to change the culture of banks. Um, now, here's another company that has completely the opposite culture, Google, right? Google are kind of, for me, they're the poster child of open source. They're almost too good at open source, okay? But, so in response to AWS, they started Kubernetes. Let's, let's create an open source version of Amazon Web Services and, and beat them strategically by doing something open source. And in response to the iPhone, they created Android, uh, which is like an open source platform for phones. And then in response to Internet Explorer, I think, they created Chrome, which was like, oh, well, let's create an open source browser. So they are, they are using open source strategically so they have this idea that in order to compete with their competitors, they are going to create an open source version of that thing. And then everyone will just enjoy the open source benefits. And that decreases the value of that closed source alternative. And that's called commoditizing, commoditizing your complement. And that, that's their sort of strategy. So Google maybe are a bit too good at this, right? But what we would like is for banks to sort of enter that journey and be somewhere on the track to this and be doing more open source. Maybe they'll get as ruthlessly strategic as Google will one day, but we're, we're a long way from that right now. Um, so I asked ChatGPT, you know, um, so this goes back to Jamie's, uh, Jamie and Kat's question. They've got tens of thousands of developers at City, and I wanted to try and understand how many people worked in finance, how many developers were there were in finance versus big tech. Um, and so this is kind of, I, I, I honestly tried to find a, a good source of this, and I couldn't find one. So we're going with ChatGPT, which is always a very reliable source of truth. <laughs> okay, and so um, uh, you can sort of see the figures that ChatGPT is making up there uh, for all these companies. But then on the next slide, this is the kind of figures for like big tech companies. They're kind of like, they're similar, all right? There's a similar number of developers in both of these sort of sets of slides. So my contention is that if we get all these financial services firms doing open source in the same way as the big tech firms, this is huge. This would be a huge shift, a huge game-changing shift for open source and for financial services. 
Um, right. So what's Finos doing in order to try and help with this? Um, obviously, Jamie's talk was all about Git proxy. This is one of the things we're doing. This is another thing we're doing. We have this project called Open Source Readiness. And the idea of this is to try and get all of the financial services firms together to talk about their best practices. Um, so, you know, what, what practices are you adopting in your firm to enable open source? And then, by sharing those best practices, it means it's a lot easier for everyone to get started. So, City are, are, are great at this. They are really pushing things forward with tools like Git Proxy and uh, a lot of the work that they're doing on open sourcing their, their policies and procedures. Um, other banks also getting involved in doing the same thing. This project which you can find on our website, I'll flash up the URL at the end. This is where we're trying to collect all of that information. Um, and we have sort of special interest group meetings on this every couple of weeks, which if you're interested, you can also come to. Um, so yes, that's step one, is to, to build up that kind of knowledge base so that people in firms across the industry can start picking up these the best practices and ways of working and rolling them out. And this is, kind of, um, this is kind of how we think about that problem. So um, on the left-hand side, we've got like regulations and risks. And this is the things that the banks are care, care about. They want to stay within the re regulations. They care about risks like the risk of um, data leakage or the risk of um, reputational damage. And so then we think about, well, what can we do to mitigate those risks and how can we abide by those regulations? Well, you need to start performing certain activities and making certain measurements. And then over on the right-hand side, Finos has started to think about certification. How can we certify that individuals understand these risks and regulations? And how can organizations demonstrate that they are performing these activities and they have a certain level of maturity at, at performing open source? So yeah, yes, um, so this is kind of a project that we started at the beginning of 2023. We started like taking this model and trying to expand it out and produce documentation at all of these levels to explain uh, what you have to do to do open source well in a, in a financial services firm. And so this is kind of like a snapshot, very recent snapshot of our OSR website where you can see some of these activities. I, I could. You know, this is a hard thing to show on a slide, a, a website, right? <laughs> and I didn't want to just like bamboozle you with loads of images, but this is just a taster of, of what OSR is all about. And, and basically all of these different uh, pink links here are different articles that people in our community have written about a particular problem, about a particular solution to that problem. So, so this is quite a, quite a vibrant, quite a a happening community in Finos where lots is going on. And in fact, immediately after this meeting, I've got to go and chair one of the OSR sessions. So we're definitely going to finish this on time because I'm going to have to <laughs> leg it out the back door. Um, so yeah, come and, come and get involved in that if you, if you have time. Um, this is just a quick view of some of our GitHub PRs. So we have like loads of PRs that we discuss in the meetings. And um, you can see some of these are written by people like... Uh, so Kay works for Goldman Sachs, and Brittany works for um, Fannie Mae. Some familiar names on there. Um, yeah, and some of them I write myself. I like ghost write them. I help, I sort of interview one of our members and then just write up what they tell me and we go and discuss it in the SIG meeting. Um, so that's the knowledge base. Number two is show the way. How can we show people in the industry how, how can we, you know, show what the right way to behave is? And so, Jamie and Kat's project, Git Proxy, we have like, we, we, in fact, I think it's next month or the following month, we're going to have an OSR session just about this where we start to show their latest changes and, and what they've been doing on this project to the members of the OSR community. And when people have a data leakage problem, we say, go and check out Git Proxy or start working on Git Proxy and get involved in that. And it's the same for all of the, the risks, right? If you have um, reputational risks, well, let's, let's go to this slide. So uh, we have training, right, which we've, we've built as the OSR community. And the idea of this training is that 
the banks might say, well, we have a, a worry. We worry that um, our staff are going to say stupid things in open source projects, or they're going to commit things that they're not supposed to commit to the repos. Well, OK, here's a training that you can do which tells you what to do and how to behave. And this starts to mitigate uh, the risks for, for the banks. They love a good training. They love uh, making their staff do lots of trainings. It's kind of um, almost a cottage industry in itself. People like uh, Kat helped me out with this training uh, last year as well. So this is like a, a collaborative effort with, uh, with, across our industry, across our members. Thanks, Kat. <laughs> um, and we've got... So this is something... This is new for today, right? So uh, we built an exam. This is a Linux Foundation exam that you can take to prove that you understand the best practices of contributing to open source as a developer working in the finance industry. So this is a proctored exam. And as of yesterday, this is now live on the, the Linux Foundation website. We've been doing beta testing for the last couple of months. So um, now it's live. You can go on there. You can pay a bit of money and you can take it. Or if you're a Finos member, you've got, I think it's free for the next three months. So get as, many of your, um, get as many of your staff signed up to take it as possible and then share the results on LinkedIn so everyone knows you've been taking it. Um, and if you're not a Finos member, then Rima, are you here? Go talk to Rima. Uh, we have a... We have a um, we have a booth down, uh, no, we're downstairs. Upstairs we have a booth um, in, the, in the big uh, vendor hall. So please come by and, and talk to us about uh, Finos membership and, and also the other projects in Finos. Um, so this is showing the way, right? We've got the software, we've got training, we've got certification. Hopefully this is starting, is this gonna start to change the story around open source within financial services? And that is, the idea is like, can we, can we make this story, can we tell a different story? Can we stop banks from being this closed shop, very secretive organization? Can we make it so that they're all collaborating across the industry on problems like uh, reg tech, uh, problems like AI, uh, even things like data visualization, modeling. These are all things that banks are starting to look at collaborating on. We have projects in Finos for all these things. Um, what we don't have enough of is contributors from across the industry because of that iceberg problem. If we can solve that iceberg problem, expose uh, developers across the banks to um, open source projects, then we can really start to affect some wide scale changes in the industry. Okay, so let's do some calls to action. Um, please, if you have time, an inclination, go to training.linuxfoundation.org and, and do your certification. Or join some OSR meetings. Um, there's the calendar.finos.org. That contains all of our events and SIG uh, special interest group meetings. Uh, if you're really feeling, ex you know, if this has really excited you, then go onto our um, GitHub page and start reviewing some PRs or write your own PR. Um, and we have, on June the 26th in London, we have our Open Source and Finance Forum meeting. It'd be great to see you all come to that. Um, there's, there's a whole bunch of different sort of topics and things down there. Hit the, um, the QR code and uh, find out more about that. It's, the Call for Papers is open as well, so if you want to submit a talk and come along and talk at that, then please go for it. Anyone want to take a screenshot while we're... And then very, very last thing, the OSR website. All of this stuff is on there. We've got links on all, all of those things on there. Okay, that's it really.